Welcome back to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying the Fiesta build, but it's now come to an end. So what I want to give you is a breakdown of the costs, the price of the car and what we sold it for. So the car has sold. Um, I did advertise it on Instagram, uh, but I didn't sell it on Instagram. So if you did see it on there, you'll know the car was for sale. Uh, Instagram handle, if you want to know, everyday underscore salvage. <coughs> um, so of course we bought the car from Copart and it was a finance repossession. Previous owner had jumped all over it and damaged it and that's why the damage was on it. It wasn't written off, it was just repossessed from the owner. No keys, uh, minging inside as you saw in previous videos. And uh, yeah, and that's how I got it. On the day of the auction, I put a maximum bid in of 1,500 quid and let the auction run. Uh, one person ran me up, but not a lot. It was like a hundred quid or something like that. Anyway, I won that car for 1,050 quid, which I thought was an absolute bargain, really. Um, after the good old Copart fees, the bill was 1,354 pounds and 80 pence. So that was out the door, basically. So 1,354 pounds was... 13 plate Fiesta, no keys, but damaged. So my delivery driver charged me 90 quid to bring me the car to where I live. It's a standard fee for me for him because I use him all the time, so that was good. So list of things that we did on the car. So we brought the grill, that crappy grill. But yeah, that was 29.99. I'll do it in my list of order, which is probably all back to front, but there you go. Uh, the MOT was 30 quid because I get trade price. Uh, I had to have the car programs originally and in the process of having the car programs um, <clears throat> I brought a new key to so the guy programs the new keys into the car obviously I had a new lock set and whatnot but he only charged me 90 quid for that because I obviously supplied all the keys so it's basically just a software thing for him rather than the uh, hardware thing bonnet so I brought a pattern part bonnet off eBay and that was 89.99 that was from parts buster i also brought a wing from them as well that was 36.99 again from parts buster and that was a pattern part the original lock set so that included the lock barrel uh door lock and one key that was a bargain 40 pound i will say if you're looking for a lock set uh mate and it's for like a fiesta mark 7 there's, the lock sets aren't different throughout the cars. The only different one you can get is the one for the automatic. I'm guessing there's some sort of mechanism that stops you from shifting the gears or whatever. But yeah, that's what I was told, the person I brought it off. As long as it's not automatic, it will fit. Um, the spare key itself that I brought, second, um, brand new, that was from Amazon. That was $15.99. Absolute bargain, they are. If you ever need a spare key for a Fiesta, get yourself an Amazon. They're $15.99, non-genuine, but they uh, they certainly work. You do have to get it cut, though, so bear that in mind. With that um, £90, I actually had the key cut as well, so we programmed it and did the key. Right, the paint. Um, I tried to just work out the paint, but... I'd spent about 250 quid at the paint shop, but I brought paint for my Mini because I was spraying my Mini at the same time, and I brought various bits and bobs, but I've worked it out just for this car alone. Uh, all the paint and sanding pads, uh, roll of paper, which, you know, it's massive, it lasts forever, so, you know, you sort of take out half the cost of that. Um, sanding discs, I've got loads of sanding discs left, yeah, so... I, I worked that to be the whole paint and everything to get that car painted was £119.82. Uh, and then on top of that, <clears throat> we did a service and we did the wishbone ball joint. So those two combined was £102. And that was it. Um, oh no, sorry, there was £25 for the log book because it was uh, obviously previously lost. So my grand total for buying and fixing that car and putting it back on the road was £1,999.58p. So originally, um, as I say, as soon, as soon as I it was all fixed, I started using it, so obviously tax. Uh, the tax was free, so it didn't cost you anything. That was one of the reasons why I put it back on the road briefly. Um, <clears throat> insurance and everything, obviously that's my own costs. 
and there was some diesel still left in it but I put a tenner in it but again that, that's mine so I'm not going to include that so we advertised it for, I had a quick look online and they were selling in between 2,000, 3,000, 3,500 up to 4,000 with that sort of mileage. Dealers were asking 3,500, 4,000, obviously you expect that. Private, the cheapest one I could find was 2,500, similar spec, it was only a Z-Tech, around about the same mileage. The, the pricings for them were a bit all over the place. I mean I could find one for two grand if I really looked on a 13 plate. It just, you know, some cars had a few marks here and everywhere, but the pricing was a bit of a weird one. <clears throat> so I advertised it for 3000 and I, I got no takers at all, so I was a bit dubious as to think it was a bit pricey. So I actually reduced it to... I only actually advertise on Facebook, so I generally advertise on Facebook first, and if I get nowhere, then I'll go to the paid sites. My next option normally is eBay. I, I, I used to always use Auto Trader, but... You get all the old nonsense calls and same with Facebook, all the wasters that you get on there, you know, what's the last price and all that crap. But anyway, I did reduce the price to 2850. I had a couple of people contact me at that price. And it's just the usual, oh, how long have you had the car? I've only had the car since April. Oh, there must be something wrong with it, you're getting rid of it. It's just stupid ones. And then the other one, there was a bloke that was interested, but because I couldn't prove I'd changed the cam belt, which I never cam belt was it a cam belt cam chain i can't remember i looked in the book and it said 10 years or 100,000 miles it needed to change the belt i'm sure it's a belt correct me if i'm wrong we, we, we say belt or chain whichever one but the book said 10,000 miles or 100,000 miles uh, 10,000 miles uh 10 years or 100,000 and i said this to the guy but he, he wasn't having any of it he said no it's gonna snap it will snap any day but you know just talking out of his bum that one so we give up on him I mean, I really do hate advertising. I, I love buying cars. I love fixing cars. I hate selling cars. I really hate it. So, <clears throat> I decided to look online at one of these car buying sites to see if they would be interested in buying my car. And uh, originally, I went to the usual We Buy Any Car. And their figure they give me was... 2750 quid i would like to say when i first purchased a car back in april i did actually do a wee buy only car then and they offered me three and a half thousand but i think that was during lockdown and obviously car prices were stupidly high but you know they like to downgrade the price they offer you if you if you do it once and then go back and ask for it to be an evaluation they know it's you and they will put the price down so just so you know about that one <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so we buy a car off of 2750 but I knew they were going to knock me down, so I thought, no, I'm not going to go that one. So I tried another company called... And uh, there's not many of theirs. They don't have many shops. They're not as big as um, we buy any car. So yeah, they don't have as many stores, this one. But anyway, there was one local to me, and I only have to just basically drive there and... Uh, they look over the car. I do apologise if my camera is auto focused and it shouldn't be, but the lighting's a bit poop in here. So again, so <clears throat> um, so with we buy on your car, it was two seven fifty, and it was the reason why it was two seven fifty. They did offer more, but you put your price in. I mean, so you put your car details in, and there isn't actually an option where you can actually detail. If you just put your reg in mileage, it would just give you a generic price, and it would expect that car to be brand new. A lot of people don't realise this you, when you put your details in. They don't actually go down further and look at the info. Like it should have two keys, full service history. There should be no scratches on it, no dents on it. And uh, yeah, etc, etc. Um, but if you use the drop down box, <clears throat> you can actually input more details like dents, scratches. So I did all that because there's a couple of marks on the car. And um, uh, also with the service history... A full service history means every year, every stamp for that whole life of that car. If you miss one stamp or you've got it stamp, you know, you've got it done at a garage and there's no paperwork, that's classed as part service history. So if it's not full service history from every stamp, then it's not full. So my service book included most of the stamps up to about 60,000 and then there was some there was some local dealer stamps and then there was one in there that was just written in there. So I put part service history in. So I included all the dent scratches and everything. And then they say they give me two, 2750. It was more, I can't remember what they offered me originally. I think it might've been near a three grand. But I thought, oh, I'm just not gonna go with that one. So offered 3,050 quid. There's no option in that one to, um, Put any details in 
Uh, so I actually, there was no appointments available to take it there. Um, they actually emailed me shortly afterwards and said I don't want to <clears throat> book in next week. So I said, yeah, I, the guy, I did ring the guy originally because he was only local to me. And I just wanted to ask his opinion on that. You know, they offered me 3,050 quid, but there was no option to include any of the damage. And he said, it's just a ballpark figure. He said, when you come, we're obviously minus whatever. And I, I guess that would be this, the case. So I went with that. So I took the, I, I missed my first appointment. I couldn't make it. So I took it about four days later. Um, I won't say which one I took it to, but I took it to one and it was a small, small one in the car park. It was quite, actually quite, quite nice actually. I did have to take my kids with me, which was a bit awkward. And the, uh, the place was about 10 miles from me. So my, 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 my big dilemma was if I sold it and left it, how do I get home? I've got two kids in the back and one's got a car seat. So I thought this is going to be a bit awkward. So it's going to cost me about 30 quid to get home in the taxi. But yeah, you, you sort of have to do what you've got to do. If I had not had my children on with me, which unfortunately I did, I would have uh, got just, you know, a taxi back or whatever by myself. But yeah, anyway, so I got there. The guy was really nice. Um, he took the car for a quick rise around the block just to make sure it's okay. Parked it out the front. And uh, he said, I'll be about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. He was about 10 minutes, if that really. We went round it come back in and he said yeah i'll let you know what i've found so he said i've checked the service book and it's not full service history and i knew exactly what he was going to say the stamps are not in there so there was a small deduction for that uh you see there's a mark on the front bumper if you remember where we put the bumper grill in there was that mark in the in the top corner uh yeah i won't bother showing you the old grill you know where it is and he said there's a couple of marks on the back quarter panel which i knew about Funny enough, he picked up on scratches on three of the alloy wheels, not the one I repaired there. And he said, so they would need touching up. And the, um, he asked me if the car had been repaired. And I said, um, I've changed the wing on it. And he said, oh, the paint match is pretty good. He said, but I know that if we try retailing that, we're going to have to uh, do something with that wing. And I said, what do you mean, do something with it? And he said, it needs a cut and polish. I said, okay, that's fair enough. I'll accept that. And he, I said, is the paint all right? And he said, yep. So as long as this car's not been written off, it's absolutely fine. You know, all, I had a brand new car once. It was only about two weeks old and someone whacked into the side of me and that was all repaired. And, you know, five years later, no one would have known the difference, would they? But yeah, he said, no, the wing's fine. And I said, okay. I didn't declare that I changed the bonnet. I wasn't asked to and I don't, didn't feel obliged to either. So it's just a bonnet at the end of the day. As I say, just because your car hasn't been written off doesn't mean it hasn't been repaired. I mean, I've got a 2016 Abarth at the front and that's had some paintwork on it. But, you know, it, I, the garage didn't, wasn't obliged to tell me. It's just had some paintwork. It's quite normal for a car to have paintwork. So he went, so he said, yeah, okay, we'll do a deal. I'll give you the price in a minute. And um, he had all my bank details and he said, I'll make your payment. And uh, he typed it in the computer and he said, oh, oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, I can't buy this car. It's come up on the HPI register. And I was like, has it? And he said, yeah, there's a, a vehicle alert on it. And I said, well, what kind of vehicle alert? I said, because I know it's HPI free. <clears throat> and um, he said, no, it's not been written off. He said, but because it's gone through a salvage company, it comes up in the vehicle alert. Now, I remember when I first HPI'd it, there's no Cat N, no Cat C. Cat C, not no more. There's no Cat N, there's no Cat S on it. And because uh, obviously it hadn't been written off. But the problem is, if you buy a car from a salvage company, it will always appear on an, an enhanced HPI report. So if you just buy a basic one, it will say, no, there's no total loss. If you buy an enhanced one, so there's a couple of companies out there that do a better enhanced ones, it will actually pick up that it's been through a salvage company because salvage companies come up on the marker. And uh, he swung the screen around and he said, uh, yep, yeah, there's your car. I've got all the pictures from Copart. And uh, yep, yeah, I can see that the wing was damaged which you've told me about and you've replaced. He said, but I can't buy it because it's on the vehicle uh, register. And I said, well, okay, I, I appreciate that. But um, it's not written off. I said, so what's the difference? I said, I could have brought that car from Tom, Dick and Harry. I, for argument's sake, I did say to him, I brought in a bath and that's got a painted wing. It's not written off though. And he said, okay, let me speak to my boss. So he spoke to his boss and five minutes later, he got off the phone, he said, no, we'll buy it. He said, it's not on the vehicle history. He said, we expect cars to have some minor damage and repairs. And he said, as long as it's not been written off, it's absolutely fine. 
and it wasn't written off. So with that in mind and all the bits and bobs, uh, let's say you must have two keys, you must have a full service history. If you don't, they will knock some money off. But let's say they offered me 3,050 quid and after all said and done, they said we give you 2,750. So I said, yes, please. I was happy with that. So yeah, so they're not as bad as what made people make them out to be. And yeah, they um, transferred 2,750 quid into my account and I had it within five minutes. But Tom had walked out the building, it was in my account. They dealt with all the paperwork, took the V5 and uh, that was it, it was gone. Left it parked there. Um, I was actually parked in a shopping centre because they've got like this little unit in the downstairs car park. So me and the kids went off into the shopping centre and had a bit of a mooch around. And then I debated how I was going to get home. Bearing in mind I'm carrying a car seat about, oh, we can't even see me hands. Oh, about way big. It was massive. And uh, so I said to the guy, can I leave a car seat here? So I can go and have a mooch around. And he said, yeah, that's fine. So I left the car seat there for a bit, went back. And uh, I walked around the local town that I was in, trying to find a bus stop. I was like, well, how do I get a, I don't even, I haven't been on a bus in years. I happened to walk past a uh, taxi rank and uh, there was a taxi drive, a couple of taxi drivers parked at the front. So I tapped on his window and I said, uh, will you take me here, which is my location. And he said, where is that? I was like, I just tried to explain to him. He said, yeah, that's fine. And because I had the car seat with me, I said, okay, he's put the car seat. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, how much is that going to cost me? And he said, well, how much do you normally get charged? must have been thinking that I'd already done this before and I literally just went 20 quid and he went yep that's fine it was only about 15 miles so 20 quid I, I don't mind that and it was just easier you know two kids car seat could have got on a bus because I did find the bus stop as the taxi was driving I saw the bus stop or well, the bus depot and um yeah I could have done it that way but it's just so awkward and of course the bus would drop off in the town and I don't actually live in my town I only live about two miles from my local bus stop town so I thought yeah the taxi will do fine and we had a nice journey back, but yeah, so I had 2,750 quid. Normally, I'd wait a little bit to buy another car, but I decided I'm gonna like talk about this in the next video because the new car I've got it's, it's literally out there, I've already got it. But, um, so obviously, I was thought, right, we go down the old salvage route again, and again, buying and selling salvage cars is great, but there's always that cat N, cat S mark on them. Again, I've just sold a fiesta that wasn't even categorized but it was come on the vehicle alert so i knew if i brought another car through salvage it would show up on it so i thought i'm gonna troll no i like facebook for this i like buying cars off facebook because you can find them i don't like selling them on there i always like buying them on there so i thought i'm gonna troll facebook <clears throat> like within 10 no, no, it's been about three hours of being home. I was on Facebook having a look. And I thought, I'm going to have a look local to see if anyone's selling any cars for about 2,000 quid that are a bit ropey. When I mean ropey, I don't want them written off. They need to be driving. They need to have MOT and uh, etc. But I thought, if I look for a car that's a bit ropey, like needs a bit of paintwork, those are the cars that sit on Facebook for ages because people go and view them. And you can always tell, like, you know, this car's it was say blah, blah, and it now is reduced and then reduced again. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I found a car. And uh, as I say, I will, when I show the car, I'll talk about it. But I found this car and um, it was advertised for, I might as well say the price, I don't know. It was advertised for 2,250 quid, but then it was reduced to two grand. And my theory was, if I can buy that car for like, 1700 quid and make it look tarted up a little bit i can ask like 2300 quid for it and make about four or five hundred quid so that was my plan it didn't quite turn out like that i got it a lot cheaper than that and um yeah when i went to look at this car it was not as described it was described as a lovely car with a few marks and no dents yeah if it wasn't me buying that car he would have never sold it. I brought it because I knew it was going to give me some cracking content because there's loads of things wrong with it. But yeah, I mean, I just can't believe how people would advertise a car like that and uh, try and fob it off. Here's an indication of uh, the car. I didn't test drive the car because I didn't feel like I needed to. I saw enough of the car. And because uh, he was local to me, I agreed that once I'd purchased it, I would, I would drive to him... Uh, no, he would drive to me, I'd take him back, etc. But it turned out that the guy, 
he, he, I give him 24 hours to find another car and he came to me, picked me up. I took him to the new place he was buying his car and I took the car home. But it was the only funny thing I will say in this video is that when I test drove it, because I knew it was driving, I knew the bloke was driving around, so obviously it was okay. Well, it wasn't okay. I, I'm not going to talk about the main bit, but yeah, I got in it and turned around the corner and uh, as I'm driving off, oh, I could hear was this grinding and squeaking noise and he said, oh yeah, ignore that. He said, it's only just started happening. He said, the discs and pads are a bit squealy and the noise kind of went after a little bit. It was raining, so perhaps the rain was helping, but when I drove it back, the noise was just even worse. And that's going to pick my mate up from the train station. So as I pulled into the train station, I just sort of got out and had a look at it. The discs and pads are, are completely shot. The lip on the disc, it got to have been like that. The, the, I've never seen a lip on it. So that was it then. As soon as I brought that car home, it's parked out there now. I ain't using it. It's just, I can't believe that. It, just a multitude of things wrong with this car. And you just can't believe that people would actually even sell a car like that. But anyway... We'll talk about it in the next video because it's out there and this is a video about the Fiesta. So yeah, it's sold. So there's no more videos. I know I probably should have gone around the car and give you like a, you know, like a proper send off for it and tell you this is what it looks like now. And now it's beautiful and clean, but it was a spirit of the moment thing kind of thing. I hadn't, I'd finished doing the car and I remembered that I must do a, like a video like this on it. But, um, as I put the details in, it was like, oh yeah. And I thought, you know, you can't really hang on around because if I, I had to do the car purchase within seven, no, four days is uh, on this one, seven days on Weed by any car. But after the four days, if you then reevaluate the car, they drop it. So I thought I need to do it. So I said, I missed the first appointment. They, they were fine about it. And uh, I sort of went the day after. So I just needed to keep within that four days to get the three and a half thousand, like, you know, the top, top money they give me and then drop me down from that. So yeah, so I didn't film a car. I didn't film around the car and show it, but the last video, give you an indication of what it looked like and it was all nice and tidy and clean and as I'm recording this another video has just gone on so that's the last video on it which would be changing bits and bobs on it so I hope you enjoyed this video so don't forget to stay tuned I, and if you've managed to get to this end of the video then you've done well because I know I'm over 20 minutes at the moment just talking and I've not moved from this position I do hope the camera hasn't been zooming in and out on you because I can see it keep going and the colour above me is not uh, not best and it's, uh, it's 9 o'clock at night so I'm filming in the shed as you do, why not say? Eh? I thought I'd just do this video and then I can start my new one. Rain all day tomorrow, rain all day today. So I've, I've actually washed the uh, the new car in the rain. I had to, it's just vile. If you can't work on a car and it's filthy, but yeah. So please stay tuned for my next car. It's nothing outrageous, I will say that, but I thought it was a good buy and uh, for the year of it and the mileage was pretty good. But yeah, so uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the uh, Fiesta build. Oh, by the way, the next car is not a Fiesta. I've just, the last two cars I've done Fiestas, I don't want to do another Fiesta. That's just boring to me now. But yeah, so if you've uh, enjoyed these videos, like them. And if you want to subscribe, you can do that. It's free of charge. Uh, you don't have to subscribe. I'm quite happy for you just to carry on watching me and not subscribe. But you know, if you subscribe, you'll get a notification for me. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching this build and I'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.